Good afternoon, everyone. You enjoying your early days of September as it starts to cool off here in the desert? So I wanted to share a few things with you today that I've been thinking about, and it's one of the very most important principles or things to look at in how you live your life, because this is the thing, one of the things, hey Elizabeth, that helps you really build a very strong foundation of health and longevity and feeling good. So this is all about relationships. So think a minute and contemplate or just look at the, the most important relationships that you have. You know, how they've molded you, how they've influenced you. You know, relationships are one of the biggest things that form us into who we are, for good or for bad or for indifferent. But just think for a second of the most important people in your life that have really made an impact on you. And what have you learned from that? Whether it was from a hard relationship or a hard experience, but then from that, then you've learned and became a different person. You know, so many of us, and I think this time of a year, or this year in particular, where we've been on lockdown and separated from everything and everyone, and think so much has been closed, then that really has given us an opportunity to think about what's really important. Who are the most important people in our lives? And if you really want to keep those relationships, then what would you need to do in order to nurture and deepen them so that they are a relationship, an awe-filled relationship instead of an awful relationship? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a year of reflection because it's, you know, if you never really take the time to pause and ask yourself some important questions about the relationships in your life, it's too easy just to fall into the, the same rut that you've been doing for, you know, years or probably most of your life. You're not even conscious of how are you responding to these other people? How do you want to show up for them? Do you want to be an example of positivity, of love, of nurturance? Or are you just gonna fall into the same old, same old patterns and that ends up with too often worrying about what other people think of you, wanting to appease them, giving in to them, and then you have like a codependent thing. Or there's lots of conflict and strife and butting heads. You know, think about how do you want to show up in your relationships? And you know, there's something that I learned several years ago. I, I did a period, a phase of my life where I was working with an, a healer, an intuitive healer. And one of the biggest things that she taught me from that whole, all of those years was that the way that we show up in other people, with relationships with other people, it's really a statement about our ref relationship with ourself. Everything comes back to the self. And in our conditioned society, so much of it is all about taking our attention off of ourselves and focusing it on what other people want, doing the wills and the whims of other people at the expense of us. And then you wonder, it's like, why isn't this working? Why am I so miserable? Why, do I, why is this person driving me to argue or to shop or to drink or eat or whatever? You know, it all comes back to us. And one thing that I, again, that I learned from this, you know, the healer friend that I worked with for a long time was that she said, you know, look at your relationships as a mirror. What are they reflecting back to you, telling you about you? How else are you going to see your own shadow unless it's reflected back to you in the, through the mirror of these other people? And I've talked to you know, a lot of different clients over the years to explain this of you know, whenever you're having a conflict, whenever there's something going on between you and the other person, you know, it's so easy to fall into this thing of, oh, it's all about them. Well, if it's, they're doing this and this and this and they've got this pattern or, or they're wanting me to do X, Y, and Z. And I always have to stop and ask them, it's like, so what is the theme? 
of this conflict? What is the, really the message to you about you? And sometimes people have a hard time looking at that. I know I did for a long time until I learned the value of this. But if you can look at what are they saying about you? My internet's having an issue. Perfect timing. Okay, so maybe this will work better. But, you know, ask, you know, look at whatever your gripe is about that other person. Say if they're, if they're controlling or if they want me to do this and this and this. Turn it around. If, if, for example, if control is the issue that's tripping you up and getting you all worked up the most, that is a direct indication that you need to look at your own patterns of how you control things and other people. Or if you feel like you're being squelched or you can never, they never listen to you. And that's another common thing. Or they don't respect you. Then ask yourself, where do I not respect me? How am I treating myself? How am I not listening to me? How am I not trusting me or respecting? So when you do that and are willing to look at that, oftentimes it's not easy. Trust me, I've been, I've had so many times when I'm looking at this and, and doing this process in my head and I was like, oh, I really don't want to look at this about myself because it's not easy. It, it really isn't because then you have to look at and really embrace the fact that you haven't been nice to people and you haven't been nice to you. And, you know, unless you're willing to really look at that and see what they're reflecting back to you about yourself, how can you change anything? How can you improve your own sense of, of self-trust or confidence or knowing that you're going to follow through with your word or being able to set boundaries if you don't have that feedback from other people. You know, I was, remember years ago when I was younger growing up, I was very, 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 <laughs> very self-conscious and really shy to the point where, you know, if people were talking to me, then I'd answer and I could hear it, but nobody else could really hear it. And then I would turn beet red, totally beet red. I was so uncomfortable and so extremely self-conscious. And as I was growing up, you can imagine that would make it really difficult for me to even connect with people or talk to people or have a, you know, develop any kind of friendships. And then in my early 20s, I just remember so many times feeling of just not having a, a not much substance or depth or you know I was just operating off of what I had been taught from other people how I had been raised and what I had been taught to believe was important and there was always this thing underneath it all of not feeling really sure of myself very insecure very uh, not a lot of confidence at all because I hadn't no I never I didn't know who I was I hadn't developed me and so when I was a few years after that, working with that healer teacher, then just the experiences that, of going through that exercise that she had taught me of really looking at, so if this person's bothering you or triggering you in some way, what is that saying about you? And so just going through that time and time and again and looking at what I was carrying, how I was, operating the beliefs that I had the emotional stuff that I had without having a way to examine that and clear that and then heal all of that emotional stuff I would never have been able to develop the self-confidence the groundedness the clarity a sense of self that had you know, a, a solidity, a substance, a depth to myself, I would never have been able to develop that if I had not gone through those experiences and exercises that she taught me. And I think so many people 
in our society don't have that depth. They've never really developed themselves. And so they're just going on autopilot and then they wonder why their relationships are so full of conflict. Or they just aren't supportive. Or they feel like they have to give up themselves and acquiesce to the wills and desires of other people and worry about what other people think. That's a huge one. You know, and once you get to a point where you can develop a stronger relationship with you, you don't care what people think. You know, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with you. If they get twisted over whether or not you look at them straight, crooked, or regardless of whatever it is that you say, if you post something here on social media and, and somebody gets twisted, that has nothing to do with you. And so rather than like flashing out and getting into this engagement of this argument, which so many people tend to do on Facebook, you know, just step back and say, that has nothing to do with you. And you know, whatever their issue is, it's like, let them have it. So when you have that sense of solidity within you, it's so much easier to develop true, meaningful, supportive, loving relationships where you can have real conversations rather than just the surface stuff or the conflict. But to really share yourself and to feel like yet when I'm in the presence of this person, it's a safe place. That's so important in relationships and especially the way things are falling apart now. We need to be able to have that kind of a safe place to where you can feel like I can take off the mask. I can be real with this person. They're not going to shame me or judge me. You know, that is so incredibly powerful in healing. When you can know you've got a place that you, people that you can be around where you can just be and let down all of your guards. You know, you can be an idiot, you can be weird or nerdy, you can flub up and they still accept and love you because they know that you're in a growth process just like everybody else. So my encouragement today is to just look at, take some time and really looking at your relationships. How are they nurturing and supporting you? Are they loving relationships or are they relationships? And if they are, then maybe you can make some choices to have some conversations, do some things to either shift those relationships or let those people go. Because life is too short to be in toxic, unhealthy relationships. Because, you know, it's, I'm sure you've seen, you probably have experienced, we all have, when relationships don't work, they eat at your gut. They eat, they keep you awake at night. Your mind just spins and chews on them and it's, it's not healthy. And there's, you know, just the drama, the, the everything that goes with it. And how often have you seen people where they have had, they've gone through a horrendous breakup or some type of an emotional thing in their relationships. And then a couple of years later, they're diagnosed with some type of an illness. You know, what is that saying? It's saying that that person has not been able to really resolve whatever that conflict and trauma and pain and anger was. So it was stored in the body. The body took the hit. And the only way for that energy to be transmuted or released from the body is through physical disease. Is that what you really want? You know, what can you do to shift your relationship so that they can be supportive of your health, supportive of your overall lifestyle. You can really have those meaningful conversations with people and feel heard and feel safe and supported. And when you can do that, that's also an indication or a reflection back to you of the depth of the relationship that you've built with you that you've made your own self a priority, that you can take the time to say, okay, I need a break, I need to go meditate, do a spa, go for a walk, whatever, to take care of you, so that you can go then back and interact with the other person, and then it's a much better exchange because you're refreshed. You know, that's so important.
to really value your own relationship with you and to be willing to look at the shadows, look, look at the parts of yourself that you don't really like and really embrace them and bring them into the light. Because as long as they're hidden, they're going to show up in what you see in other people and then you, that's what sets you up for conflict or judgment or argument or whatever. You know, I remember too, there's times when I was going through this, doing this type of inner work and I would do a lot of journaling in this process just to help bring a lot of the feelings and thoughts forward about how I was really feeling about myself. And believe me, they were kind of a surprise to see, oh wow, this is how I really feel. I don't really like myself. <laughs> But it's, you know, and there's, it was times when I would be sitting in the journaling and looking at it and it's like, oh, wow, I really thought this. I really felt this way about that person. This is the energy that I've been carrying around and how I felt about myself. And it wasn't, it wasn't comfortable. And yet that's the most freeing thing I could have done is to really acknowledge that. The shell acknowledge the part of me that wasn't very nice to myself or other people. And when you do that, then it just opens the door for the wisdom piece, the truth of yourself that had been held within that part of yourself that you didn't like. And when you can embrace that and look at that and be willing to look at it and see what, what does this thing have to tell me it's like, oh, this was really my truth, but I didn't express it in a very way that, in a way that was very loving. And so it became the shadow, and so you rejected it. But when embracing that again, reclaiming that and listening to that part of yourself of what it needed to tell you, that's the key to really developing a deeper, more solid relationship with you. That's the key to develop trust, an inner knowingness, a strength, a confidence of self-esteem. You know, I could have never developed that if I had not gone through that shadow work. And I would still be living, you know, very insecure, very un very self-conscious, very shy. And that's, that's no place to live. That's not healthy either. So I just wanted to share some of that with you and encourage you to really take some time this week and evaluate your relationships. What would you like them to be? What kind of conversations do you really need to have with some people to clear the air if there's things that need to be worked through? So you're welcome. Thanks for sharing. So that is something that's it's considered one of the seven principles of health that really nourish you, feeds you, supports you in having a very strong foundation to live a long, healthy, vital, energetic life. So I encourage you to do that this week. And so drop a comment below if any of this touched you or stood out for you. What did you enjoy most about this video of, you know, something about developing you? All right, so thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Thanks for all your comments and I will talk to you all soon. Take care.